And we can see here that we have uh, other examples of um, of installations, uh, land art installations by Richard Long. So, for example, a circuit in Alaska, which is uh, in a much smaller scale. Then, for example, as we saw in the work of uh, Robert Smithson, uh, you also have on page 86 um, installation with 119 stones, for, um, and and this one is installed in a room, so in an, in, a, in an exhibition room, and in page 87, a circuit in Alaska is directly installed in the landscape, so it's it's um, by the sea. And this one is from 1977. And we can see that in the work of Richard Long, this sculpture definitely has an ephemeral, a very ephemeral character. Um, also an interesting uh, piece by Richard Long is Mountains to Mountains. And in this case, the piece is of course very close to conceptual art, um, since it describes a 138 mile walk from the Comorac Mountains to the Monovalach Mountains and and uh, from one um, location of mountains to the next location of, of mountains or so from mountains to mountains and of course this is um, similarly to Yoko Hono's um, book, book of instructions with her instructions these are proposals for the 138 mile walk which also give us uh, an idea of the dimensions and and the distances between these different uh, these different mountains. Uh, Richard Long also produced uh, a series of of mud drawings, so he was also very interested in working uh, with drawing as a medium, but also with natural natural materials or with pebbles, and he was very interested in working with these spiral, also with the spiral motifs and the circle. Another artist, land art artist, that was uh, interested in working in this uh, way of processes and, and integrating his work, either bringing natural processes to the gallery or gallery installation uh, strategies to um, nature. So we have a few examples here. One is Earth Room, so by Walter de Maria from 1968, and we see that uh, the room uh, in the gallery uh, is completely installed with Earth, so Earth has completely taken over this uh, space, exhibition uh, space, and this is the installation. And then we have uh, probably one of the most known uh, works, also most ambitious work, from Walter de Maria, the lightning field, which is uh, an installation made uh, to with these uh, poles to, on purpose, attract lightning. And this is also this is a land art piece, but it's also a piece of conceptual art because it it it, it shows that it can it can work with many factors that are not in control of the artist, so it, it's dependent on environmental conditions um, and there's times when nothing can happen or something very dramatic can happen so it's it's at the same time ephemeral and in many ways uh, unpredictable but at, but at the same time being site specific uh, and another piece and this with uh, some connections to the work of Richard Long uh, my long drawing by Walter de Maria. So it's it's also a picture and it's this uh, interpretation of of the line and the continuous line uh, in asphalt that we see on the road, interpreted as a performative uh, land art uh, gesture in the landscape. Uh, and we will end our lecture with the work of uh, Christo and Jean-Claude. Christo died recently, as you probably know, a few weeks ago. He was working still very, very actively during, during this uh, corona time. Uh, but he was also very interested in working with large-scale installation and with some references also to land art and, and also some 
environmental concerns, but at the same time using the same uh, similar strategies to intervene in the urban uh, landscape and also using materials, uh, man, this contrast between the man-made material and the natural and the natural environment, but often mixed the man, the urban and the and the natural, the man-made or the artificial with the natural. So we have on page ninety-five we have a wall of oil uh, barrels, with barrels, which was also ironically called the Iron Curtain. Um, page 96, we have Valley Curtain from Christo and Jean-Claude. Jean-Claude was Christo's partner and they worked uh, together to create these uh, large-scale installations, which, of, also in, which involved often uh, what became Christo and Jean-Claude's uh, signature, uh, signature style of working, wrappings of, of fabric, so using large scale uh, pieces of fabric and wrap, wrapping um, either buildings or bridges or uh, other large-scale uh, elements or, or in the case of belly curtain to to make this large-scale curtain that that uh, kind of drapes uh, a valley in the United States Here we have also on page 97 the um, project for the surrounded islands of uh, Christian Jean-Claude and this uh, was a kind of polemic project also because some people found that it had two obvious uh, sexual connotations. Um, so sometimes Christian Jean-Claude's uh, projects were also a little bit, a little bit provocative but most of all very playful. Uh, and as you can see from uh, page 98, the Pont Neuf from uh, Christian and Jean-Claude, so they wrapped, the whole idea was to wrap. Uh, and uh, this was a project that developed from 1975 to 1985. So often these large-scale project, uh, projects really took a long time to be uh, planned and prepared and uh, executed. So. Um, it, it wasn't just uh, just you know having the idea of doing some wrappings. There was whole processes, often bureaucratic processes, and so on and so on, that had to be dealt to make sure that the uh, the artwork could actually happen, and also all the logistics uh, and so on. Um, but these were considered part of the artwork also itself, and this was also um, new, for it showed that the artist is also someone who conceptually has to deal with how to manage all these constraints and all these uh, and all these uh, factors uh, in order to make the artwork uh, happen to make the artwork possible and to work to integrate these uh, these constraints as also as part of as part of the work uh, one of the most iconic work iconic works from Christian Jean Claude was of course the Reps uh, Heimstag in Berlin, which was a project that developed also for a long, long time, so from the birth of the idea in 1971 to the final execution in 1995. And uh, one of the most recent projects uh, finished in 2016, the Floating uh, Piers, which is also an intervention in, in the landscape. And yeah, that's it for today. Uh, we had also a bit of an ex more extensive uh, lecture, but you have you have here an overview of these different uh, these different artistic movements and how and how they worked with uh, with installation also in this different context. And I think that for you as uh, interior designers, or perhaps in the future if you also work as architects or um, in the design of exhibitions and so. You can take many of these uh, many of these references as inspiration to make you think about uh, how you can work with the room, how you can work with space, and construct narratives and um, situations through um, with different uh, all these uh, thinking about all of all these different approaches and and possibilities, and also how to think. Uh, conceptually about about the work. So I hope you enjoyed the lecture and I hope you find it useful and we have 
one more lecture until our cycle of lectures is over. We will talk on the next, next lecture a little bit. We will start with uh, feminist art and then we will talk about um, some, some more recent uh, art movements and artists and, uh, and then we will close our cycle, our cycle of lectures. So I hope you enjoyed it and until next time, bye bye.